Hi, everybody. My name is Missy Matthews. I'm pleased to be joined today on our Steelers Nation Unite huddle with General Manager Kevin Colbert. He has been busy today. A press conference earlier today with Head Coach Mike Tomlin and joining with the fans now. So if you want to ask Kevin a question, please press star three. Uh, Kevin, thanks so much for taking time out of your day. Uh, We have tons of fan questions, as you can imagine, as we are just days away from the NFL draft. Oh, good good to talk to you guys, Missy. Always look forward to it. All right. We have some online questions. We also have some uh, fans who are on the line, and I do want to get to an online question first. Heather was the first one to submit one, so I feel like we should give her her due. Uh, Kevin, her question to you is, what is your favorite aspect of draft preparation? Well, you know, beyond a doubt, it's it's learning – uh, about these young men as as people beyond football players, uh, you know we spend the entire fall watching them, watching their videos, attending games, so on and so forth. But I really look forward to meeting the the person under the helmet and trying to gain a perspective of who that person is, and then what his football character is as best we can determine. Again, we can watch and see the talent, but that that unknown part that we like to investigate and learn about is always interesting and exciting. All right. Again, if you would like to ask Kevin a question today, please press star three. We are going to go live to Jeff, who is in South Carolina. Jeff, you're live. Go ahead and ask Kevin your question. Hi, Mr. Colbert. How are you? Doing great, Jeff. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm hoping that uh, I've got season tickets, and I'm down in South Carolina, so I'm hoping the stadium's open this year, get back to home. That would be great. But I got a, a kind of a two-part question, and um, one is um, I know we don't move down too often in the draft, and when we have, we've done pretty well. But um, I know that it's usually the next man up, but needing so many – um, crucial parts in the coming years moving forward, not necessarily this year, next year, but like in the coming decade. I mean, um, if if a center presents himself, and you guys have obviously Hall of Fame centers across the board, um, are we, you know, is is that something that's going to, you know, happen? Do you think that there's a chance of possibly moving down, which is the second part of the question, but you know, I just wanted to know what you felt needing so many of these parts that, you know, even for the next two years, but I'm talking long term. Sure. And, you know, our challenge every year is to try to put the best team we can for the 21 season on the field and never ignore in the future because um, that's our job to always be competitive year in and year out. So what we always look at is who we're looking at at a particular pick. If we like the player that we're looking at and have the opportunity to pick, 95% of that time we're going to take that player and not trade back. If we do trade back, I always like to do it on a 100% guarantee that we'll get a player that we like. So we will look if we're looking to trade back five spots, I want to make sure there's five players that we will feel comfortable in taking so as to get the player that we want and maybe pick up some extra picks along that line. Um, We did that with Casey Hampton years ago and obviously ended up with a real quality player and some extra picks that helped us with some other positions. So we'll always value quality over quantity, but in a given year we may have to trade back and, and try to accomplish both. Okay, again, if you want to ask Kevin a question, please press star three now. Uh, We're going to hop over to an online question. This one, Kevin, is from Dan in Scottsdale. He said, based on Matt Canada's promotion to offensive coordinator, will his scheme impact how you draft? Uh, You know, obviously, Coach makes the decisions on his staff. And then once we start working within a group, and again, Coach Canada was with us last year as a quarterback coach, so we had an understanding of of what he likes to see in a quarterback, and he got an understanding of what the NFL is like. So moving into the coordinator position, we're still doing that same type of thing. 
where we're learning about what Matt's preferences are for players, and he's also learning about the process on our end as to how to go about it from and looking at it from a coordinator's perspective. So it's always an ongoing uh, evaluation process, uh, albeit in different roles for Matt this year than previous years, but we're always growing and learning from each other on a daily basis. Okay, our next question is James, who is in Ohio. James, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Kevin your question, please. Hi, Mr. Colbert. How are you today? Doing great, James. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Looking forward to the draft. <laughs> My question is, uh, how long in advance do you guys start building your draft board? Well, you know, in a given year, uh, the draft process starts the previous May. So approximately one year from uh, next month, or a year ago uh, next month, uh, we started this, this draft in May of 2020. When we started to meet after the, after the 2020 draft, we started meeting on the 2021 players that would be available. And we, we continued that process throughout the fall when, when those players were playing into the All-Star Game season, into the pro, day, the pro Day season, and then subsequently into our meeting. So it's usually a year-long process. Sometimes it's, it's longer than that when we know there's a young player that uh, may come out in a draft. We did that with Chase Claypool uh, last year. You know, we had known about Chase for – really had watched him for a couple of years because he had talked about coming out as a junior. He decided to stay. So we had extra information on Chase, but it's usually a year-long process. Okay, just a friendly reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star three to get in that queue. We're going to jump to an online question now. This one is from Billy in Pittsburgh. Kevin, he asks, how much of an impact does losing Steve Nelson have on the secondary, and does Joe Hayden play a more significant role now in terms of helping younger DBs? Well, we had to make you know tough decisions uh, with when faced with the salary cap challenges that we were this year. Unfortunately, we weren't able to keep Steve in the mix, um, and we did that. We made that move um, knowing that Joe Hayden would still be with our team. Uh, you know, we have Justin Lane and James Pierre who did some nice things uh, as young players on the rise uh, the last couple years in, in Justin's case. And, of course, in, in James's case, he was with us last season. But also in being able to have Cam Sutton uh, signed and, you know, staying with us was very encouraging as Cam will line up both inside and outside as we try to sort the, the secondary out. All that being said, uh, we could still add more players via the draft because, as I stated today to the media, uh, it's a good corner draft. There are good players uh, that will be available for us to pick if it makes sense to pick them in a given pick. All right, Kevin, we are going to head to the U.K. Our friend Gordon is on the line live to ask you a question. Hi, Gordon. Go ahead and ask Kevin your question, please. Hi, Mr. Colbert. Thank you very much for your contribution to Steelers Nation. My question is, what do you do in the short off-season to relax? And if you ever travel to the London, please let us know. I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the call from overseas and the support that, that you personally are giving us, and then, of course, the fans overseas. We, I've been there twice. Um, once with the Steelers when we unfortunately lost to the Minnesota Vikings, and then once I was there in a preseason mode when I worked for the Detroit Lions, uh, we came over and played a preseason game against the Dallas Cowboys back in the 90s. So it's always great to know that we have fans, you know, around the world, but to hear from you and to talk to you, it's really, it's really a pleasure. And, again, I want to thank you and, and your friends uh, for the support that you give us over there. and. You know, our off season really, you don't get too much downtime. You know, you maybe get uh, two, three, four weeks at the most in the summer after our mini camp and before the start of our training camp. But even when we're on vacation, we, we always got to be thinking about how to make our teams better. But I'm sure we'll be back over in the U.K. at some point in the future. Um, but always look forward to it because it's a, always an educational and fun visit. 
Okay, Kevin, we have an online question from Alan. He said, over the years, who was the biggest surprise in terms of a player falling to you in the draft? He was thinking maybe Cam Hayward. No, I'd actually go back to uh, Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, we were picking 11th that year. And, you know, we, we knew it was a great quarterback class. As it turns out, it's most likely uh, three of those gentlemen will be in, inducted into the Hall of Fame at some point when their careers are over, um, and, and Ben included. So really, to have him fall to us at the 11th pick, um, that was an unusual occurrence and very surprising. And it was very, obviously, um, beneficial to the organization because Ben has played at a high level throughout his career, and we look forward to having that career extended for the 21 season. All right, let's go live to Rick, who is in West Virginia. Rick, you're now live. Go ahead and ask Kevin your question, please. Hello, Mr. Colbert. I'm a proud member of Stiller Nation. and wanted to thank you for doing this call with us. You my, question it, is, my question is, my question is, it seems to me that we have some significant needs at running back, center, and offensive tackle in this draft. If at pick 24, if you happen to have three three players available at all three positions with similar or the same grade. How do you go about selecting the player? We'll, you know, um, we'll select the best player regardless of position. Um, you know, I don't, I don't quite share the view that it's a, a need. As, as I stated today, you know, we have 50 players of the 75 currently on our roster that have played in NFL games. The majority of those 50 have, have started NFL games. So we could start a game today. Um, we could play a game today and feel good about the group we put out there. So really, we go into this draft being wide open and, um, you know, never forcing ourselves to take a particular position. Um, more often than not, when we've done that in the past and when I've witnessed it from afar in the past, uh, we will make a mistake and teams will make a mistake if they factor in you know, that dreaded word, need. Uh, we always want to focus on the want, and the want will always be the best player regardless of position. All right, we have time for just a few more questions with Kevin. Another online one, this is from Aaron. He wants to know, what is your favorite position group to evaluate during the draft process? Well, I, you know, I think, uh, again, the quarterback position is the um, – I don't want to say the most important because if people don't block for him, people don't get open for him. Um, if people don't rush him or cover the guys he's trying to throw it to, it, it's all related. But the quarterbacks are the most intriguing because uh, they're the focus or the focal point of every play. Uh, unless it's a shotgun snap, they're involved in every play. And we have to learn and understand what those guys go through on a play-to-play -play basis. So, it's very important. It's very intriguing. Uh, there's a ton that goes into it, not only from a um, from a physical standpoint, but from a mental standpoint, uh, and now just to be able to play that position. I would say that on the offensive side, it's the quarterback, and defensive side, it's the inside linebackers, because so much of what they do isn't learned. It's just an instinctive act. All right, our final question is from Sean, who is live. Go ahead, Sean, and ask Kevin your question, please. Hey, Kevin, thanks for taking time out of your day to do this call. Um, my question was, what is your draft strategy this year, um, losing weapons on both sides of the ball? Again, Sean, we're, we're open to anything. I mean, um, in a given year, you know, you have players that – you're able to keep and players you're not able to keep, players that choose to move on or players that we choose to move on from. So each year, you know, we're, we're presented a different challenge as to how to make best make up your team. And part of meeting that challenge is what's available to you in a given draft. Every year, uh, the depth of a draft varies and the positions of strength vary. We just have to try to match the, the current talent pool available to us to the positions that, you know, we would like to address. But, again, we're never going to stress – I can't stress enough that we're going to play take players that we want and not use that word need, uh, again, because I think that could 
that could lead you in a direction that wouldn't be as beneficial as getting those guys that we want to have as Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us here today on the Steelers Nation Unite Huddle. Kevin, thank you for your time and best of luck in this week's draft. Uh, Thank you, Missy. You guys take care now. All right. We hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for joining us. We'll be in touch soon.